Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about few general things that we can keep in mind to increase our score for chemistry and generally for like biology also. These are not tips and tricks because this is a general cliche that we have picked on, um, picked up on during the past few perhaps months. Uh, just tips and tricks for sciences and, and like I'm skipping a whole chapter and you can just tell me a trick and I'm going to be able to do that whole chapter that doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that in sciences and I'm pretty sure that it doesn't work like that in even social sciences also. So I have some things in mind and we're going to talk about them like one by one. So let's begin. The first thing is that you have to keep in mind, you have to understand which keyword the question is using. For example, if the question is using describe, you just have to tell me what's happening uh, if, the, if the question has given you a diagram or a graph, you have to tell me what's happening over there. You don't have to use your own reasoning or your own previous knowledge to explain what might be going on. For example, if there is hydrochloric acid reacting with calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid reacting with magnesium carbonate and the graph has been given and I ask you to describe me what's happening. You just have to tell me, by K. Uh, the graph was steeper for this compound, it was less steeper for this compound and uh, the graph becomes horizontal at this time in this case, it becomes horizontal at that time in this case. You just have to tell me about what the graph looks like. You don't have to come up with an understanding of what might be the reason. I don't know, I don't want the reason right now. If I was using the word explain, then you give me the reason. That for example, calcium carbonate is perhaps more reactive or less reactive or whatever. And then you tell me that for example, magnesium carbonate was easily reacting and that is why this happened, whatever. Um, then you come up with a reason. Otherwise in describe, you don't come up with a reason. In explain, you use your own understanding also. Now another keyword is state. In state, you don't, um, you don't have to use anything, anything based on reason at all. You just tell me that for example, the statement is this or the definition is this. If I ask you to state Hess's law, so you just tell me what's happening in the Hess cycle or in the Hess's law at all. You don't have to uh, give an understanding of or give an explanation for what might be happening. If I ask you to state what entropy is, you just tell me the definition. If I ask you to state what a weak acid is, just tell me the definition. Even if there are few keywords in the definition, that's okay. Another thing to keep in mind is if the question is asking you to write the formula of something, you write the formula of something. If I ask you to write the uh, name of something, then you do that. For example, um, for example, if the question says, uh, state the name of the compound produced at a node during this electrolysis and you write the formula of that thing. Now that is technically wrong because I asked you for the name of the compound, right? So keep that in mind. If I ask you to write the formula of the species oxidized in blah, blah, blah reaction, then you have to write the formula of the something with the, with the charge on it or with the, with the whatever on it, then you can't name it. So keep those things in mind. If I ask you to identify and identify both things work and identify you can write the name or you can write the formula both work. Another thing that can improve your score is generally to understand what chapter is a question coming from? For example, if a question is from reversible reaction, then there are very specific keywords for reversible reaction, like forward reaction, reverse reaction, equilibrium shifts to right, equilibrium shifts to left, yield increases, yield decreases, things like that. If a question is from rate of reaction, then there are other keywords. For example, um, kinetic energy, speed of particles, frequent collisions, less frequent collisions, activation energy, um, alternate pathway, things like that. You have to understand what the what chapter is the question coming from. If the question is coming from, for example, organic chemistry, then you have to tell me about the functional group, then you have to tell me about homologous series, you tell me about forces. Bonding is an important chapter in O-level chemistry. Um, chemical bonding, relies entirely on keywords. So if I'm asking about uh, covalent bonding, so you have to tell me simple covalent molecules, weak intermolecular forces between molecules. If I'm asking about ionic compound, if you know it's an ionic compound, you tell me electrostatic forces and then you say between positive and negative ions. If it's about metallic bonding, then you say electrostatic forces between positive ions and sea of electrons. 
If it's about strong covalent, you tell me strong covalent, giant covalent compound with strong many covalent bonds. Then you have to use the word lattice if it's about metallic bonding or if it's about ionic compound. You have to understand these keywords. I'm writing these in the description also, like with, with specific keywords. Keep those in mind. For example, another thing to keep in mind is also when you're dealing with, for example, redox reactions. In redox reaction, and a very common mistake is not using the correct name of the compound or the species or the ion. For example, if you want to say sodium has been reduced, I want you to listen to this again. Sodium has been reduced. That's wrong. Because sodium is a metal. Metal can never be reduced. Sodium ion can be reduced, right? Another thing to keep in mind is, for example, chloride, chlorine, let's suppose you say chlorine is oxidized. It is very rare. You can't say chlorine is oxidized. Um, you, it's, it's better to say chloride ions are oxidized. I'm talking with reference to O levels. In O levels, chloride ions are oxidized because Cl minus loses electron, becomes chlorine gas. So you have to understand what's happening in a certain reaction. Another common mistake is saying um, copper has been reduced. Copper is a metal. Copper can't be reduced. Copper to ions are reduced. So you have to understand what's happening. You can't write if it's electrolysis, happening electrolysis, and you say that sodium is discharged. Now listen to it carefully again. Sodium is discharged. Dude, that can't happen. Sodium didn't have a charge in the first place. Sodium ions had a charge and those are being discharged. So you have to say sodium ions are discharged not sodium is discharged. You can't say chlorine is discharged. You have to say chloride ions are discharged and the product is chlorine. If I ask you for the product, you have to say chlorine gas is the product. You can't say chloride ions is the product. So you have to understand what's happening. Chloride ions are discharged, chlorine gas is produced. Sodium ions are discharged, sodium metal is produced. So the words matter a lot. Even if you're in A2 level or AS level or like in biology or chemistry, these words matter a lot. Then especially in organic chemistry, for example, if it's organic chemistry and I ask you to draw the structure, a common mistake people do is they draw the carbon structure and they start filling the hydrogens with all the bonds. And then they put in the functional group. Don't do that. If you are making a structure of an organic compound, for example, butanoic acid, now you have to understand butane means four carbons. So draw four carbons in a row. And then since, an, since it's an acid, draw the functional group first on one carbon and then put in the hydrogens. It is very wrong to put four carbons and start filling the hydrogens and then realize, oh, it was butanoic acid. Don't do that. If I ask you to draw ethyl propanoate, so you understand that it's an ester because it's ethyl, the propanoate, the name implies it's an ester. Draw the ester functional group first and then the carbons, if you know it's ethyl, so two carbons and propanoate, so three carbons more, draw your carbons with a distance, with, with a gap and draw the functional group first and then fill in the hydrogens. You should not fill in the hydrogens first, otherwise you'll have to remove the whole structure later. It's going to take up your time. These are few things that I have in mind in my part one video, let's call it the first part video. And the next video, I'll also highlight some other mistakes that people do. Stay tuned guys, thanks.